All right, everybody. We have this story from ABC News. New York OK's human composting law, sixth state in the U.S. to do so. New York Governor Kathy Hochul has signed a law making her state the sixth in the nation to allow human composting as a method of burial. I am torn on this one. Part of me, I don't care. You know, when I die, stick me in the ground, throw me in the trash, let my body decompose. The concern here is the composting portion of it implies that you will use the human body's materials for food of some sort. And you don't believe me now, but we know about the grooming story, right? We, 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 we hear this, and I'm not going to get too much into it because it's not about grooming, but they say drag queen story hour. And they're like, it's totally fine and totally normal if someone wants to read a book to a bunch of kids. They're just reading. It's no big deal. But their drag queen's doing it. Then the next thing they do is we're doing a drag queen show for kids. It's just dancing. Then you see what happens in Texas. And all of a sudden now they're like simulating adult activities. That's the grooming portion. We are being groomed right now to eat human. That is my belief. I'm not saying it's a grand conspiracy. I'm not saying the government's trying to do it. I'm saying there are people who are in media who are trying to get you to be okay with eating people. Here's how they do it. It's composting. No, no, no. We're not saying you'll eat people. In fact, some of these laws, and this is true, some of these laws say you cannot use human compost for farm products, things like that. But here's what happens. This is step one. They tell you it's innocuous. It's no big deal. The next thing they do is they'll say it's only used for if if it does end up in food, it's only for livestock. But then you're eating a pig that ate corn that grew from a corpse. You see how they're getting you you getting it getting there. And if you don't believe me, let me tell you where this ends up. Wired wrote this article in 2021. It's actually it's, it's an enthralling article. The case for cannibalism. And you've seen it. There have been many stories that have gone viral talking about why people should eat people. In fact, in this Wired article, it says you're a xenophobe if you don't want to eat people. The, the point of the story is to talk about the Donner Party and how a bunch of people in the Donner Party refused to eat other people and then died. And they say, but you've got 50,000 calories frozen right there in the tundra. Why not eat it? Because you're a xenophobe holding on to traditionalist views of ancient Greeks. And I'm kind of just like, because I don't want prion disease. Okay, fine. They do mention that. Like, don't eat the brain. I don't want to eat a human being. You know, is it xenophobic? No, it's it's a safety thing. Humans don't eat other humans. They don't want to because there are problems, there are diseases and and issues with eating other people. And because we genuinely try to preserve life, we treat ourselves different from animals. But here they have the article. How about this? Let's read about how they're going to start composting humans in New York. Of, Of all of the things that could be happening, this is this is it. They want you to eat people. ABC News reports Howard Fisher, a 63 year old investor living north of New York City, has a wish for when he dies. He wants his remains to be placed in a vessel broken down by tiny microbes and composted into rich, fertile soil. Maybe his composted remains could be planted outside the family home in Vermont, or maybe they could be returned to the earth elsewhere. Whatever my family chooses to do with the compost after it's done is up to them. You see, that's where they're going. Look, my personal preference, Viking funeral. If I die, if, put me on a boat, kick me out into the middle of the ocean, flaming arrow, And that's not composting, but then your remains convert to carbon and whatnot, go up into the atmosphere and become one with nature in that way. I would prefer not that my body decompose in the family garden and then plants grow from it. That sounds kind of weird. But here we go. At first, they said the compost can't be used in these ways. Now it's a guy saying, I don't care what they do with it afterwards. Yeah, right. They're going to start growing corn just like in that that Johnny Depp movie. Quote, I am committed to having my body composted and my family knows that, but I would love for it to happen in New York where I live rather than shipping myself across the country. So they're going to mention that Hochul has signed legislation. This is on December 31st to legalize natural organic reduction, popular natural organic reduction. You see, they're even giving it some convoluted name to make you okay with it. Popularly known as human composting, making New York the sixth state to do it. The process goes like this. The body of the deceased is placed into a reusable vessel along with plant material such as wood chips, alfalfa and straw. The organic mix creates the perfect habitat for naturally occurring microbes to do their work quickly and efficiently breaking down the body in about a month's time. The end result 
is a heaping cubic yard wow of nutrient dense soil amendment the equivalent of 36 bags of soil that can be used to plant trees or enrich conservation land forest or gardens for urban areas such as new york where land is limited it can be seen as a pretty attractive burial alternative look there are really good arguments we got all this sweet sweet nutrient dense material in our bodies Throw us into the forest, let nature reclaim it, and trees may grow. But I tell you where this goes, and it goes Soylent Green. It is grooming towards cannibalism. Don't believe me? Fine. I don't care. But you saw what happened in San Antonio with the grooming. They do it increment by increment. And maybe it's not on purpose. But if you open the door to human composting, the next step is farming from human compost. The next step is, is animal agriculture from Human composted remains. How long then until they say someone died, feed their body to the pigs, let the pigs eat it, why let it go to waste? How long after that are we eating those pigs? And how long after that are we saying, cut up the middleman, eat the person? I don't trust it. Axio says human composting is a hot new burial alternative. And look what they use for the image on this article. A skull wrapped in the recycle logo. Why it matters. Deciding what should be done with your remains is a deeply personal matter. California recently became the fifth state to legalize human composting uh, through which a person's remains are turned into usable soil. OK, on the surface, many people are going to be like, yeah, well, so what? Look, I'm not, I've never been a fan of the, um, the serial, ceremonial burial and embalming process because my, my view is when I die, I don't want to be preserved, locked in a box and buried. I want to decompose. I, th that's fine. I certainly don't want my my compost to be used for farming. That's why I'm saying Viking funeral. Put me in a boat. Kick me out to sea. Flaming arrow. But we are now on six states that are allowing human composting, which brings me to this actually really good article from Wired from two years ago. Now, I certainly don't agree with their assessments. Don't get me wrong, but it actually is really interesting. The case for cannibalism. How to survive the Donner Party. Don't be young, health, don't, don't be a young, healthy single man. That's our first piece of advice. The first thing I want to say is it's not a good article in terms of its premise, in terms of its advocacy. It's really interesting, however, to learn about the Donner Party. They say, let's say you want to strike it rich. The year is 1846 and you're somewhere in the Midwest pulling potatoes out of the ground. But you're tired of pulling potatoes. You want to pull gold. And maybe you've heard the rumors. People are finding fortunes in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada. So you hitch up your uh, Conestoga wagon, very cool, by the way, and head west, joining that year's uh, convoy of California-bound immigrants. And on July 20th, you and the rest of these early pioneers find yourself staring at a crossroads in what is today southwest Wyoming. Like them, you'll face a choice, turn right or turn left. Both trails lead to California, but the trail to the right detours far north. It meanders deep into, the high, into Idaho before it reverses course and turns back south into eastern Nevada. The left trail eschews the northern deviation, takes a straight shot across Utah, and in doing so removes almost 350 miles from your journey. So let's say you look at a map, note the faster route, and decide to turn left. At the time, it seems like a wise choice. Andrew Hastings, an adventurer and respect, respected guide, had just scouted this shortcut on horseback the winter before and advertised his new cutoff in his guidebooks and postings along the trail. Most of the convoy, fearful of the unknown and unwilling to trust one person's word, turned right. But you're not the only one keen to arrive early in California. When you turn left on July uh, on that July day, 20 other wagons do the same. After a few uneventful days, you and the rest of those previously unconnected pioneers will caravan together for safety. Following some debate, you'll elect a nice, older, wealthy fellow as a leader of your party. His name is George Donner. So it's interesting. Long story short, there was no path. There was no trail. They had to carve their way through the mountains. And it wasn't a shortcut. It was actually very, very difficult. Now, it's funny. You can call it a shortcut because if the path was going to be easier, it would just be the way. But it's not the way because there was no shortcut. All in all, what ends up happening is as they get trapped in this valley, they can't make it through the mountains. People start dying off. What was really interesting about this article is you learn. And I don't really know this. I don't know a lot about the Donner Party. Most most of the people refused to eat human and then they died. The first people to die were young men. And this is really funny. It says, don't be a young, healthy man. You know why? Women have more body fat stores and the men were sacrificing themselves for the women. Isn't that funny how that goes? 
Oh, man. Modern feminists, am I right? The young men were doing the work, were carving the roads, were looking for food, burning calories, breaking down and starving to death. The women were typically sitting around and doing much less, burning less calories, having more fat, and they survived. This is what nature does because men are expendable. As much as many people don't want to hear it, and I'm not saying that as a political statement, I'm saying it as a natural statement. Males can die, but as long as one male survives, there can be reproduction. But if you have no females to have children, then that's it. So the males end up becoming expendable. That's the trade-off. Here's what I want to get to in, in, in this article that I find actually really hilarious. Xenophobia. They write, when I ask Shut how the cannibalism taboo became strong enough that a person might die rather than break it, he says it's partly due to its antiquity. People have feared and despised cannibals for so long that it may feel as if you're breaking some law of nature when you're breaking off a rib. But what you're actually doing is breaking a social norm invented by a few xenophobic ancient Greeks. That's right. Just xenophobes. You know, they were racist bigots who didn't like eating people. I have no idea how this argument is supposed to make sense. Is the argument that the Greeks found native Pacific Islanders or something eating human and said, oh, egad. Is the argument that the Aztecs were, were sacrificing people and they were South American cannibals and the, the, the noble colonizers came and were just like, oh, oh, well, I never. And they were all racist. Is that it? I shouldn't say noble if their argument is they're colonizers. That's the argument. How about if you eat human, you get diseases from those humans? How about we try to preserve human life so we have a taboo against eating humans? How about we love and respect other humans and hold them higher than we hold animals? And thus, when a person dies, we, we, we hold in honor their remains. That I understand. And if you eat someone's brain, you can get, uh, what is it called, encephalopathy or something? You can get the shakes, prion disease. Very, very bad. Simply put, when a human being dies... We feel bad and we don't want to desecrate the remains. It's not xenophobic. I don't care what other like I think cannibalism is bad, but it's not like I hate this group of people over here who who eat humans. Therefore, I think cannibalism. No, I think when someone dies, we cry that person's dead and then we honor their remains. We don't eat them. Here's where we're going, though. I think you've got people like Bill Gates. You've got prominent, wealthy individuals around the world who are concerned about this population bomb theory. What's the guy's name? Like Paul Erlach or something. He's been in the news recently because he's been just abysmally wrong over and over again about overpopulation. And these people think we're going to run out of resources. Truth be told, I think it is entirely possible we do because resources are not finite. I don't know if we're at that point just yet. And I also believe humans invent things to solve problems. Go back to the turn of the century, 1900s. They were all saying that there's going to be mounds of horse crap in the streets of New York making it impossible to live because more people meant more horses, meant too many, horse, too, too many horses crapping. And then what happened? We invented the car. Now there was no horse crap. Now they're complaining about auto emissions. Yeah, well, then Elon Musk makes electric cars. So if you think there's a problem with overpopulation, I would say I hear you out. Obviously, resources are finite. I don't think cannibalism is the solution. I think just, I don't know, space colonization or something like that. Or, I don't know, just general recycling, I guess. They're trying to get us in this, in, into this headspace because they believe we will consume too much of the Earth's natural resources and we have to put them back. And that means composting people and eventually Soylent Green. Here they go. Shut has traced the earliest examples of the taboo in Western culture to come from some of the earliest Greek stories, such as the tale of Polyphemus and Odysseus in Homer's Odyssey. In what may be the first example of a writer depicting cannibalism as the act of a monster, the Cyclops Polyphemus catches Odysseus and his men stealing from him and in turn begins eating them one by one until Odysseus blinds the giant. The Greeks used cannibalism as a way to define the worst behavior possible in another group, Shut tells me. The probable explanation for why they chose cannibalism to represent the act of a monster is fairly straightforward. It's what their northern European enemies, the Androphagi, is that you say it? Greek for man-eaters, did. For the Greeks, human flesh was the food of foreigners, and thus eating, eating it the lowest one could stoop. From there, the stigma only grew. I'm going to go ahead and call shenanigans, and here's what I think. I think a dude ate another dude and then started spazzing out and shaking, and they were like, maybe we shouldn't do that. If you look to many ancient texts, the Torah, the Bible, they say not to eat pig. 
Muslims as well. Why? Pigs are dirty animals and they're loaded with parasites and diseases and viruses. But once we started cooking them and raising them with antibiotics and, and, and with better hygiene, all of a sudden it was safer to eat. But the trope still exists. The argument is the reason why in the Old Testament and the Bible and things like that says not to eat pork is because it was actually dangerous and they were telling you practically not to do it. Similarly with uh, shellfish and things like that, you could get sick from it. Now, most people don't even observe those, th those tenets. Many religious people will eat pork. Many don't. Many religious people who are very serious won't eat meat on Friday and things like that with respect. But the idea is that it emerged because there was a legitimate reason not to do it. Why should we not eat human? You will get sick there. Right. Like there's there's no circumstance where you're going to eat a person and then and, and you're going to be safe. Like you just it's it's I, I suppose like I'm not a biologist, but it's a prion disease. Malformed proteins is different from like a virus. That being said, outside of all of this, I absolutely respect the spiritual nature of someone who says, I don't want to eat these kinds of animals. And I absolutely respect the idea that we don't eat humans because we are humans. Humans have more value. Fact. There's a lot of vegans, a lot of hippies who are like, no, man, animals are just as valuable. It's, I'm sorry, it's just not true. Humans are abstract thinkers. We create complex ideas and systems in our mind that don't exist in physical space. Things that other animals just don't do. We are a step above in the organizational structure of the universe. I don't think we are the end all be all. I don't think we're the most important. But I do think humans are more valuable than the overall majority, like, than all animals, basically. I certainly think there are some really great animals that are very valuable. Dolphins, monkeys, higher primates and all that stuff. Humans are up top. We, when someone dies, we honor that person. We defend that person even in death because we are trying to preserve ourselves and our species and succeed. That's just me. That's just me. But they're trying to convince you to eat people. So, sure. The Romans took the taboo from the Greeks, where it combined with Judeo-Christian beliefs about how you treat the dead, Shutt says. Combined that with the racism, here we go, of early anthropologists who used it to practice, who used its practice as justification to commit cultural genocide and the stigma compounded. I ask of you, how long do you think it will be, comment below, until the left starts advocating for cannibalism and they call you racist for not eating human? We're already at this point where they're like, well, the Romans were very racist. And because they were racist, they wouldn't eat people. In fact, not eating people is white supremacy. Well, because it's the white people who don't want to eat other people. That's what they'll say. Although I'm pretty sure in China, they're not eating other people. Many of the Donner Party refused to cannibalize the cost of their lives. No cannibalism took place among the Donner Party members trapped by the lake until at least late February. After at least 13 people starved and died. Don't be one of them. I'm telling you, they're saying it right here. Don't be one of them. There is frozen food buried by the lake. If you want to survive, you'll need to eat it. Sorry, dude. Maybe I'm stupid, but I would die before I would eat person. It's just reality. I would be one of those who died because I think there are certain things in life that are more important than just being alive. I think there's something bigger and greater than us. I think that we have to uphold our values and ideals, and they must persevere long after we are dead. That means if confronted with starvation, I would rather die than eat a person. That may be stupid to a, to a secular leftist who's like, but just live for yourself. But I don't just live for myself. They have written it. This is a two-year-old article. Don't be one of them. There's frozen food buried by the lake. Humans are not food. You know what? I'm going to give a shout out to Pirates of the Caribbean. One of one of the best lines in a movie. It's I can't remember which movie it is. Maybe it's the third one or whatever. And the East India Trading Company is like Jack Sparrow got branded a pirate because he took off with a ship full of cargo. And Jack goes, humans aren't cargo, mate. And I was like, that was that was awesome. Basically saying they were trying to get him to transport slaves. And he said no. And he ran off with that slave ship. A very hard thing to do at the time. But obviously, it's modern sensibilities. They want Jack Sparrow to be a hero, so they roll with it. But I think it was a very, very good line. You don't eat humans, mate. You don't do it. There's a moral line. There's something bigger than all of us. They say when practicing cannibalism, there are a few safety precautions one must take. First, cook your meat thoroughly to avoid diseases. No tartars or carpaccios. Ugh, tartars. Also, avoid the brain. You're at a small risk, a small risk of catching a deadly prion disease called Kuru from eating it. 
Instead, target the thighs, butt, calves, and back muscles for the highest caloric returns. As for the choice cuts beyond that, refer to the table below, which relies on data compiled by James Cole in his study of the caloric returns of cannibalism. At 32,000 calories per body, based on a 145-pound male, which, while light, may be accurate in this case, and at least 13 bodies, there will be plenty of food for you to eat and even share until the arrival of the first rescue party. This is nuts. I'm sorry, man. I am just not on board with it. Y'all feel free to be, I guess, but I'm going to uh, strive for a, a society in which we respect our families. We respect humble masculinity. We respect women. We respect not eating each other. And then maybe to solve our problems, we utilize technology. But here we go, my friends. Here we go. Axio straight up says it. November 21st, human composting is a hot new burial alternative. Two years ago, Wired wrote an article telling you about the nutritional value of eating human beings. Look at this. Calories in eating the nerve trunks. The heart, 651 calories. Don't be one of them. Don't die. Eat people. It's so weird to me. How hard is it to just be like, nah, I'm good. Like, seriously, though, is it supposed to be, is the argument that I'm virtue signaling to you because I refuse to eat human beings? Is the argument that I'm racist or xenophobic because I don't want to eat another person? That's how crazy things are getting. I would love to just pass this off as rage bait, as clickbait garbage. But we are seeing the laws change. They are making it in law that you can compost human beings. And in some states, you can grow crops from it, but not for human consumption, but for animal consumption. And then you eat the animals, right? They're working us towards that. They're grooming us. Welcome to our brave new world, ladies and gentlemen. I'll wrap up this segment here. I think it's uh, particularly creepy, but uh, we'll wrap up this segment. Thanks for hanging out. The live stream over at youtube.com slash TimCast is still up. For those that are watching the recorded segment, smash the like button, subscribe to this channel, become a member at TimCast.com to support our work, and we will see you all over at the live stream, youtube.com slash TimCast. But thanks for checking out this clip. We'll see you there.